Okay, I think, no, I think, I think we're good. Yeah, thank you. Okay, very good. So without further ado, uh, Tavar Henry will be talking about development of a platform for psychophysiological driving behavior studies advised uh, by uh, Dr. Brian Hicks. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll be presenting psychophysiological uh, driving behavior studies. So the goal of this project was to develop a platform where uh, we could use a driving simulator to test um, patients um, and see what their type of physiological are um, based on certain conditions, predetermined factors. So we decided that we were going to get a driving simulator. Uh, get the software for the data so they create the those patients with this So a little background. Uh, engineers and researchers employ advanced driving simulations. So driving simulators in car design, intelligent highway design, and human factor studies. Um, such, dri such driver behavior. Um, sorry. Um, so all of that is to say that we use driving simulator software to test um, patients on different things like how they react when they're under the influence of drugs, um, alcohol, and other um, illnesses. So when it comes to the psychophysiological aspect, it speaks directly to the connection between the body and the mind. So we need that information, we need all that information to test um, patients um, under certain conditions. So in our case, we're going to be using a heart rate sensor attached to the, um, the person who we study um, under the driving simulator, and we will record their heart rate, um, and that will um, be for the type of ability that has been. Okay, so the scope of work, as I said before, it really entails um, putting the, the physical driving simulator together. Uh, secondly, it is finding software that is compatible with the driving simulator that we have in the position um, and configuring this driving simulator um, to what we want in order to get the data that we want. So that is basically the scope of work. So as you can see, this is our driving simulator setup. Uh, we actually have two of them. Um, so each of them has three monitors. Um, they all have their own steering wheel and pedals. They all have their own seat. And it's not in this picture, but they all have uh, a seat. Okay. So we decided to find a few um, driving simulator software um, to test them based on certain things before we get into the ones that we want to use. Um, so we found a few, um, and notable um, driving simulator is Carla, which is the second one above. Um, it is used for validation of autonom driving autonomous vehicle systems, um, which means that Companies like Tesla would use this software to ensure that their driving autonomous, autonomous driving vehicles um, work well and under certain conditions. Um, so for Carla, that software actually has, we actually gave that software a graphics rating of five out of five. Um, you will see some of Carla a little more in my presentation. Also notable is Udacity, and it trains cars how to navigate road courses. So it has predefined conditions and just like Carla, um, it is used by companies to test their autonomous driving vehicles um, under different conditions. So we tried out all of these, we rated them, and we also rated them based on um, the operating system that they actually are compatible. Uh, so this is that table and it encompasses all the software that we have. 
that we found in Michelle. Okay, so further analysis of this, of this software. Um, we determined the, the operating system that we use, of course. And something to note is that our Java simulator is not, um, it is not very common because we kind of built, built it ourselves or um, Dr. built it himself. Um, and as such, we have to find software that can be worked with it. Um, especially because the steering wheel that we have on the pedals um, it is not very easy to find software that will just fix it. So we have to find software and configure the software to work with the hardware that we have. Um, all the software that we used was open source, so it could be modified to, modified to fit specific research requirements of future projects. Um, I'll be talking about three um, software today. That's Carla, SVL Simulator, and Deep Drive. So far, um, so this is for the audience. This is Carla. Just step in front of you so you can see it. Um, and it really does have great graphics. It might not look great right now, but it really does have great graphics compared to the others that we've tried. Um, so Carla was developed from the Carla was developed to su support um, development, training, and validation of autom autonomous driving vehicles. In addition to open source code and protocols, Carla provides, an op Carla provides open digital assets that were created for this purpose and can be used freely. So what that really means is that with Carla, we can really configure the environment to what we want in terms of the conditions under which we want our patients to actually go through so we can get physiological data. So we have that ability, that ability is there in Carla, and as such, it is a very good option for our research. Um, as it says, uh, we can configure the environmental conditions, we can configure the, how much we can the steering wheel, we can configure the traffic, we can configure um, the type of people that we have. So it is a very good software. Um, this, these are just a few more uh, features of Carla. Um, one thing to note is that users can easily create their own maps um, following the open drive standard via tools like Roadrunner. So Carla actually works in tandem with other software, so we can attach um, other software or run other software with Carla to get different conditions from what Carla offers itself. Um, and this is a picture of Dr. Higgs using the Carla software. Uh, so as I said, Carla can also network with multiple simulators in the same environment. This is very important. Um, Dr. Higgs really um, wants to ensure that we can have different driving simulators operating at the same time. So I could be in the same simulation as you, and we go through the same um, conditions and so on. So that was very important to our research. And in the future, the plan is to run studies on multiple participants driving in the same environment. So SVL Simulator is another one. Um, it was built as an open platform. Uh, it provides high fidelity simulation, uh, high fidelity simulation engine, um, content replicating the complexity of real world environments and cloud simulation for automated testing and validation at scale. Uh, these are a few other features of SL, SBL simulator. Uh, one to note is the variety of scenario creation controls. So as we said, the most um, important thing of our research is that we can actually create environments. And SL, SBL simulator actually gives us that option. Uh, the last one I'll be talking about is Deep Drive, which is an open simulation platform built to accelerate the progress accelerate progress and increase transparency in self-driving. Um, I'm not sure, you can see it in the picture um, where you can see where cars are going to go and so on. That speaks directly to um, autonomous driving vehicles because autonomous driving vehicles know where they're going, they know what they're doing. So that's what you're seeing on that um, picture right there. Uh, these are also some features of deep drive. Um, one to note is C++ extendability, so that's basically the programming language, um, and we use a lot of programming language in configuring um, the software to what we do. 
So it is it is very good to us. Um, but unfortunately, we were unable to um, to get the working as it depended on a link to Amazon Web Services that is not on the panel. Um, so all of our simulation simulation software actually did not work. Um, but that was the purpose of us going through this process. So when we're ready to actually do the study, uh, we know what we're going to use. Okay, so the heart rate sensor that we'll be using. Um, it is the polar verity sense, um, and it is a heart rate sensor that provides you with the free with um, the ability to record the activity of someone in any condition. So it's it's basically a regular heart rate sensor. Um, that we will be using. Uh, we chose the risk monitor that was designed for athletes so that it would be the most natural method of physiological data collection. The last thing about the heart rate sensor is that other more clinical methods have wires attached to participants that could, after, that could alter their natural behaviors and keep them from becoming immersed in the simulated environment. So the important thing about the heart rate sensor is that it would simply be on your wrist and it won't be like what you see in the movies, which is a cap with a lot of wires attached to get your um, side physiological so it would just be on your wrist. Um, that is more natural, it feels more real. It feels like you simply have a watch on your hand. Which was very important to us that you didn't feel any um, kind of weird way that you are in a clinical study. Okay, so what this enables us to do is um, these are these studies, um, psychophysiological driving simulator studies, um, as the one representing here, um, autonomous vehicle testing, driver rehabilitation studies, which is very important as when people um, are in crashes and so on, or you're, you're have any sort of um, accident, you can actually um, use this driving simulator to actually get back to where you were. Um, fitness to drive studies and young driver children. So in conclusion, um, we created, um, we ensured that we created a driving simulator that was able to get the psychophysiological data of someone by using um, the heart rate sensor. Uh, we went through the number, a number of driving simulators to test them to see what their policy is and if we can get the information that we really need. Um, and no driving simulator conditions can be created and the heart rate testing of subjects can begin to gather data on the psychophysiological behavior of drivers under control predefined. Questions? I have a question. Uh, Dr. Shasanya, um, thank you for explaining the features of all the software. So you're saying right now that you haven't actually collected any data at all? Right. From... Uh, okay. Uh, so why is that? So um, this is the, the, the design phase of our research. Uh, we really wanted to go through all the things that um, create the actual physical um, conditions that we want. Um, this is simply development, development and design of um, the actual study. So now we can go forward and um, carry the study. So we are at the point where we can simply get um, our patients, uh, we can say, and we can start the actual gathering of data. So we simply wanted to design the experiment. Dr. Okin, oops, sorry, I also have a question. Yes, Dr. Nietzsche. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I can't hear properly. Oh, the Can you hear me now? It's, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. So then I have another question for Mr. Henry, which is, so now that you basically said that the outcome of this research project was a design of an experimental system, right? So what would be a scenario that you could examine with this? Mm -hmm. So for example, when there is a crash on the highway, uh, we may not realize it, but if we are driving close to the crash, there is some um, physical reactions that occur in the world, or if any um, disaster happens on when we're driving. Um, so for example, if we're driving down the highway and a crash happens, um, we can actually see how um, a patient's heart rate raises or uh, falls in any event. Um, and then we can use that data to see um, what exactly really happens and how we can avoid um, those things from happening. Um, previously, I did research in road rage, um, and we found that when people are engaged in road rage or act out, um, their bodies react in a different way. Um, as such, we can use the research that we, the experiment that we designed um, to determine what really happens when someone is prompted to act out in a, in a case of road rage. So those are the, the, the scenarios that we can um, uh, use this experiment to find out. And the other thing in the simulator, so basically like it could be simulating you following a prop, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you, as the simulating, as the driver in the simulation, you decide on your following, right? Mm -hmm. So for and now, if somebody, the simulation, it also can simulate a crash, right? Yes. Okay. So then, among other things, you could correlate like if somebody's following too closely, how often does that like you could correlate the the, the incidence of crashes against the following distance, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then one last question is, uh, can a simulation of this kind Within the simulation environment, will it provoke? Will somebody experience road rage and say the same way they would in a real car? Is it too artificial, or can you really get a man by doing something <laughs> outrageous in your sim, like have a driver do something totally off the wall? Um, that's a very good question, but I'm not sure on uh, whether someone would really adapt in the real world. Um, that it's a simulation. Um, I, I figured that because of the nature. Of Experiment, we could only see um, heart rate information based on research that we do. But I'm really not sure if someone would act out in the situation. Um, but we can see that now because. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. So the next uh, talk is uh, Horace. Oh yeah, uh, Horace Mishra. Yeah, I think you were going to join online. Can you hear us? Yes, sir. I'm here, and are you hearing me? Yes, we can. Okay, so, let me go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, so we'll stop sharing here. <laughs> 